Well, uh, an OSCE is a, an objective skills and clinical examination, which is probably, from the point of view of communication skills, the ultimate in testing um, people's ability to communicate. Um, all undergraduates in the UK have to um, take this um, type of exam when they are um, qualifying as doctors. Um, in a real OSCE, it's about 24, 25 stations. Overseas doctors, you're um, requalifying in the UK as part of the PLAB exam, that's the uh, Professional Linguistic Assessment Board exam, which is administered by the GMC in the UK. They do an OSCE, which is basically 16 stations, two of which at the moment are rest stations. So they've got a shortened OSCE. People who are doing um, uh, fellowship exams, which are divided um, in the UK, part one and part two. Part one is theory, basically, and part two has got a, a communication element, which is there. The OSCE, the stations are t uh, much longer. They're not, they're ten maybe and maybe twenty minutes. But um, for the students who are coming to requalify uh, in the UK, they'd have an OSCE which is five minutes long. Uh, a station in the OSCE which is five minutes long. Now. Um, the stations are divided in basically to two types. One type is clinical and the other type is communication. And in the clinical there's still a, an element of um, communication as part of the, um, uh, the station. Um, they, for the communication purely they might be asked to take a history, explain a procedure, deal with a difficult situation where a patient say wants an MRI scan. Um, or some kind of sophisticated medical treatment and the doctor doesn't think it's necessary or a patient's worried that they've got cancer and the doctor has to reassure them or they're dealing with children. Um, they might have to telephone, they might have to answer the telephone in a hospital or they might have to talk to a consultant and persuade the consultant to come and look at a child and explain the case to the consultant over the telephone. Um, so they've got a complete realistic range of um, situations and skills, again, which we've covered in, in both books, um, so that um, students are prepared for these um, types of communication um, situations in an exam situation, and this exam mirrors real life, which may, therefore makes it easy. It's not a... <coughs> communication in isolation, it's communication as real communication to fit these two situations, the, the hospital and the, the GP surgery and the clinic and the exam situation. So an OSCE is quite a, it's a, it's a, it's a challenging exam. What happens is that they have got um, an assessor in the exam who's a, a consultant or a specialist and they then have to do um, a task related to a, spe a specific situation, like, say, giving advice to a patient about smoking. And the patient in that situation is a professional actor or actress, and sometimes, uh, in certain situations, real patients. Um, and these actors and actresses have professional illnesses in the sense that they would do maybe um, uh, um, they would be ill, have a particular illness which they then are expert in for different exams and they will respond incredibly naturally. Um, if they have to cry, they'll cry and they will respond emotionally to the patient. Um, so the, the students might have to respond to a woman suffering from postnatal depression who just bursts into tears when they, um, uh, when they ask the patient, you know, how's the baby? And uh, do they respond or do they just sit and look at the patient and wait for her to stop crying? And those, again, the sorts of skills we would, we would cover. How do you tackle these situations? So OSCE is very, very broad. It's very realistic. Um, and it's, so for, for people using this book, these books, it's useful for preparing for the OSCE for the PLAB exam, but also for OSCEs if they come and 
take part in any UK training or, or training in an English-speaking world because they're now used um, throughout the world as a, as a communication um, assessment.